Welcome to this webcast about risk management strategy and the target profile. This is webcast two out of eight. In this webcast, we are going to focus on the risk management strategy and the target profile. And you will find detailed information about other elements in separate webcasts. Determining the risk management strategy is the most fundamental part of an entity's dynamic risk management, which is the basis for the other elements of the DRM model. We understand there are diversity in interest rate risk management strategies, processes, and techniques in practice, and as a result, the DRM model does not prescribe eligible risk management strategies but instead focuses on reflecting the actual risk management strategy chosen by the entity. We expect the risk management strategy would typically include the following elements. A, authority to approve or change risk management strategy. This covers how the risk management strategy shall be determined at the initial application of the DRM model and changed over time if needed. B, risk management levels. That is the entity level at which interest rate risk is managed. This is particularly relevant for a group entity. C. Risk metrics chosen for assessing interest rate risk. An entity is expected to specify and document how it would monitor and manage interest rate risk. D. Range of acceptable risk limits, i.e. the target profile. E risk aggregation method and the risk management time horizon, and F, methodologies to estimate expected cash flows or core demand deposits. The risk management strategy is expected to be kept consistent throughout the life of the DRM model. As tentatively agreed by the ISB in September 2018, when the entity changed its risk management strategy, the DRM model would be discontinued prospectively, and the accumulated DRM adjustment should be reclassified to profit on loss over time over the life of the target profile, as defined prior to the change in risk management strategy. Moving on to the target profile, the ISB decided in its November 2021 meeting to refine the definition of the target profile to be a range of possible outcomes rather than a single outcome only. It is defined as the range, i.e. risk limits within the current net open risk position can vary while still being consistent with the entity's risk management strategy. In other words, if an entity's current net open risk position falls outside of that range, the entity has to take some risk mitigation actions. Some stakeholders have questioned that definition and asked why we were not referring to a residual risk position, i.e. including the designated derivatives. For those stakeholders, such a definition would be more intuitive than to refer to the current net open risk position, which by definition does not include designated derivatives. However, when the ISP changed the definition of the target profile, we chose to avoid using the term residual risk in order to make it clear that the target profile is to be determined upfront at the initial application of the DRM model and is not affected by any risk management activities. In addition, the staff are of the opinion that while a scenario where no derivatives are required to achieve the target profile may be unlikely, it could be possible in some circumstances. In those circumstances, the definition of a residual position would be more challenging. Representing a range of risks the entity is willing to accept given its current risk exposure, the target profile is required to be directly linked to an entity's documented risk management strategy, the documentation of which needs to be in place before applying the DRM model, in other words, it is not merely an accounting concept. When entities assess repricing risks across different time buckets, these time buckets need to be consistent with the entity's risk management strategy and the characteristics of the underlying risk positions, i.e. consistent with how the entity aggregates and manages risk. In the diagram, the blue arrow represents the available capacity for risk mitigation. Some stakeholders have questioned about the granularity of risk limit and at which level those risk limits are set. Some respondents have suggested that an entity may just have one overall risk limit across all time buckets. 
In contrast, the staff was envisaging a limit allocation on a time bucket basis in order to address changing risk exposures resulting from, for example, twists in the yield curve used for discounting. Ultimately, the risk limits set needs to be consistent with an entity's risk management strategy. The staff will explore possibilities to provide more guidance about the granularity of the risk limits and at what level of the organization the limits should be set. Consistent with ISB's previous tentative decisions, the specification and the documentation of the target profile as one of the qualifying criteria to apply the DRM model should be done at the initial designation of the model. This means any change to an entity's risk management strategy that results in change to the entity's target profile would result in a discontinuation of the DRM model. However, some stakeholders have questioned this rigorous application of the discontinuation requirements and stated that, in their view, it shall be possible to tweak the risk limits on an ongoing basis depending, for example, on the new business volume or the development of new products. The staff plan to discuss the implication of this at a future meeting. Thanks, Ziggy. You mentioned that the target profile is essentially the risk limit an entity is willing to accept given its current risk exposure. But did the ISB discuss what risk limits would be eligible to be included in the DRM model? No, the ISB didn't specify the risk limit eligibility because we wanted it to be consistent with how an entity decides to manage its interest rate risk exposures. Given the variety in risk management strategies in practice, the focus is more on how to truthfully represent the metrics used for actual risk management in the DR model, instead of setting what risk limits are eligible. As such, an entity is expected to decide how it monitors and manages the interest rate risk exposures, document the approach in the risk management strategy, and apply that consistently over time. For example, we know many entities focus on managing the PVO1 exposure from underlying banking book positions, and thus set risk limits in PVO1 terms for different time buckets. Some other entities may focus more on achieving notional matches by maturity and set risk limits based on variability in NII or even some sort of combination approaches. By aligning the target profile with the actual risk limits used for entities' risk management, it also helps to reduce the need for proxy hedging in accounting, which would hopefully improve the transparency in the DR model.